ain't gonna work. <sighs> well, I guess I'm showing you guys how to build an extension cord for your welder. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon, and before we get started on this extension cord, I just want to let you know I am not a professional electrician. Electricity is dangerous. Before you attempt to do this, know your skill set. You can cause fatal harm by electrocuting yourself. You can also cause damage to your equipment and cause fires if it is done wrong. If that scares you, do not attempt this. I will put links to all the components down below in the description and I will also put a link to a already pre-built 220 volt extension cord. That way you can just buy that without taking the risk of building one yourself. Without further ado, let's get into building this extension cord. Let's start with the tools that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a utility knife to cut the outer sheathing off of the cable. You're gonna need a screwdriver, either Phillips or flat blade. You're gonna need a pair of channel locks to tighten fittings. You're gonna need a pair of heavy duty snips. And last but not least, you're gonna need a wire stripper of some sort to strip the outer sheathing on the inner wires. All right, let's talk about the components you're gonna need for this extension cord, starting with the cable. This is 8.3 uh, Sioux wire, so it's eight gauge, three wire. This is different than 8.3 house wire that you might find wired into a 220 outlet for your washer or dryer. Being that 8.3 household wire usually has four wires, has two hots, a neutral and a, and a ground. And this being a uh, Sioux cable, it's designed for outdoor utility use, only has three, two hots and a common or two hots and a ground. The SOOW, make sure you get the Sioux cable because that is rated more for outdoor use. The S stands for utility, making this more of an extension cord and it's known for its flexibility. The double O stands for oil, oil proof or oil resistant and it's weatherproof. And the W stands for waterproof. So different cable, same title. Just make sure you get the Sioux cable. Next, you're gonna need a male end and a female end. Both of these are NEMA 650s. Uh, make sure you get the right male end that plugs into the 220 volt outlet in your wall. Make sure you get the right female end that matches your welder plug. Next, we're gonna need a box to put the female end in. This is where you're gonna be plugging your welder into. This is a four by four box. It's one and a half inches deep. And this is a universal box, meaning that it's got different size punch outs for different size cable. Next, we're gonna need a garden cover. Uh, this is standard on any outlet. You're just gonna put this over the plug after you get it all wired in. It's just gonna protect you from sticking your fingers in there and potentially getting shot or electrocuted. And last but not least, we're gonna use a compression fitting. The cable's gonna slide through here and it's gonna compress down on the cable, keeping it uh, from pulling out. Remember guys, I'm gonna put links to everything that I'm using here down in the description. I picked all of this up at my local big box store. As long as you know what you're gonna get, you can go to any big box store and pick all of this up. But for those of you that don't want to guess or you know, just want to click and buy, uh, I'll put a link down in the description. That way you guys can get all the components that you're going to need for this extension cord. All right, starting with the male end, I went ahead and took the outer cover off. That way we can get a good look at the inside here to see how the cables are oriented and to see how much of this uh, black outer casing we need to strip off. We don't want to strip too much because we do want this clamp to clamp down on the black outer sheeting, but we want to strip enough to where we have uh, enough cable in there to get to where we need to get. So if we line that up there, we're going to kind of eyeball it. Uh, we'll go about right there. So a few inches. Um, again, if you strip too much, you can always trim your cable down. But like I said, you want the clamp on the plug to clamp down on this black outer sheeting. So now we're gonna take our utility knife and we're just gonna lightly score this outer casing. 
without going too deep because you definitely don't want to cut the uh, cables on the inside. And we'll just make a score down the center. And we should be able to peel that back. All right, now that you've struggled with the outer casing for a minute, you should be left with three wires, a white, black, and a green. So the white and black will be used for our hots. The green is our neutral or ground. On the plug itself, where the green cable should go or the ground should be colored green or it might be stamped with the word green or it might have just a letter G there. So make sure you put the green cable here, that way you can put the green cable on the other end, that way you don't accidentally have a hot wire for a ground and it could fry, catch on fire, could do a bunch of different things to your welder and to your shop. So keep in mind where you put your wires and make sure you put them on the same side on the other end. So I went ahead and stripped a little bit extra, uh, that way these are a little bit longer. And I'm just going to lay this in here to a point where I know that clamp is going to be on the black outer casing. And I'm just going to preform these and get them where they need to go. And then I know this one, I believe, needs to run around the outside and then it needs to come back around and in. So the green wire is gonna be the length it needs to be. And then we just gotta trim the black and the white. So we're gonna take my snips. I'm gonna snip it there. And then this one, we're gonna snip about right there. Now that we have the three cables cut to length of how they're going to be inside this plug. We're going to now take our wire strippers and we're going to strip about a quarter inch, maybe a little more than a quarter inch off the ends of these cables. That way we can go ahead and clamp them down inside these clamps. And I like to twist the ends here. That way it gets all these copper cables nice and tight. Now on this plug itself, my set screws are on the inside here. So each of these come out. Just gotta remember how they go back in. I'll go ahead and pop these out. We'll shove them in and we'll throw them back in here. Just like that, everything's in there. Um, things are not where they need to be quite yet. When I put the outer cover on there, it'll hold it in place. So let's go ahead and put that outer cover back on. Now that we got the back cover installed, we can go ahead and put the cable clamp back on. Now that the male end is done, we're halfway there. It's time to work on the female end. All right, we're gonna start with the box. This is just a standard four x four universal box. Uh, it's universal, meaning that it's got different size knockouts all the way around it for different size cable. I started off by knocking out this one 
but the hole ended up being a little too small for my cable. So I went ahead and knocked out the larger one on a different side, and this one seems to fit just right. We can buy plates to cover this hole up, that way we can't stick anything in here while we're plugged in, and it'll keep mice and other things from going in here and chewing up your wires. So now that we got the hole knocked out, we need to figure out how much of this outer uh, casing we need to strip off. So let's go ahead and just stick that through the hole. And we kind of want a little bit extra in here. We can trim the cable uh, if we need to, but I'd rather have more than enough than not enough. We're gonna go about like that. It's gonna be about five or six inches. We're gonna take our knife. We're just gonna score the outside just like we did on the other side. Now that we got the black outer casing stripped off of this, we need to figure out how much of the end of the, the wire we need to strip in order to insert it in the back side here. And a lot of the times on these plugs, there will be a strip gauge, which on this one, it's right here in the front. And we're just gonna hold it to that. And we need to strip about a little over a quarter inch uh, to a half inch. So we'll just go ahead and get all three of these stripped up. Now that we got our wires prepped, it's time to go ahead and get the box prepped. We're gonna do that by putting this compression fitting on the cable and then feeding it into the box. This compression fitting is a, is a four part fitting. It's got this outer screw, which as you tighten this, it's gonna get tighter and tighter on the cable. And to take this apart, we're just gonna take that outer screw off. We're gonna be left with a crush washer and this little rubber piece, which is actually gonna be the thing gripping your cable. And then the body of it. And I forgot to mention, you're gonna need one of these. This is just a locking nut that threads onto fittings inside of electric panels and outlet boxes. We're gonna stick the one end through the box and we're just gonna thread this locking nut on there. Now we're gonna take the nut and this little crush washer and we're gonna feed that onto the cable. And then we're gonna take this purple uh, gripper and we're gonna feed it onto the cable. Make sure when you're putting the cap, the washer and this on here, the curved side is facing in and this will be a tight fit just like the washer was. That's kind of what you want. But we're just gonna work that on there. And we're gonna get it down quite a ways. All right, so we got the purple thing on there. And we want just a little bit of that black outer casing to be showing past the purple. We're gonna bring all these back. We're gonna slide everything together. We're gonna feed the wires through this opening. And then we're gonna start screwing this piece together. All right, so one thing I, I didn't show is you're gonna to wanna to take a, a wrench and some pliers and really tighten this on there. But now that you got that on there, we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna retwist these, make sure that everything is nice again. We're gonna start by loosening the set screws up on the plugs. And I like starting with the green one just because it gets the ground out of the way and I can't mess the two hots up then. So we're gonna feed that into this. all the way till it bottoms out. And then we're gonna tighten the set screw down. And we're gonna do the same thing for the black and the white, so let's do that.
All right, now that you got those wired up, double check your connections, make sure they're nice and tight. It would be bad if one of those came out while you were using it. Um, I went ahead and kind of preformed my wire to get it down, this down where I need it to be. And then we're gonna put this little garden cover on. It comes with the screws needed to go ahead and mount the outlet to the cover. And then your box should have two screws to mount your cover to the box. All right, now that we got the garden cover on there, we're just gonna go ahead and carefully move these cables out of the way. That way we can get the plug sitting down in there how we want it. It's gonna be kind of a tight fit. Just like that, you just wired up an extension cord for your 220 volt welder.